Whenever we create a function which should be able to take a variable amount of arguments and keyword arguments, we use the args and quarks in the function call. So that being said, we're going to look at positional and keyword arguments. And after that, we're going to look at the args and quarks as functional parameters. In general, the difference between keyword and positional arguments should be pretty clear. Just to give you a brief example, over here I have the function greet, and it takes a first name and a last name and puts it into a sentence. And all the sentence says is hello, first name, space, last name. So with positional arguments, as we have them over here in the function calls, the position of the arguments within the function call matters. So over here, if I execute this highlighted line of code, you can see that it prints out hello Elon Musk. But now if I were to turn around these two arguments, these two positional arguments, then you will see that the first and last name are switched around. You can see down here, now it says hello Musk Elon. So bear in mind with positional arguments, the position of the arguments within the function called matters. Now that is not the case for keyword arguments. Over here you can see I have the function call to the function greet and now I have added two key words over here. So the first name is Elon and the last name is Musk. So if I go ahead and execute this, you can see that the sentence is printed correctly. It says hello Elon Musk. But even if I were to switch the arguments around, uh, so now the first name is in the second position and the last name is in the first position, that will not matter over here. So if I go ahead and execute this, the sentence at the bottom is still correct because these are key words and it's mapping the first name to the first name over here and printing it first and then the last name to the last name and printing it last. So remember, for positional arguments, the position of the arguments in the call matters, and for keyword arguments, it does not. Let's turn our attention to args now. So we use it whenever we want to pass an unspecified number of positional arguments into a function. So if we have a look at this first easy example, I have defined a function, it's called args example one and it takes as an input the args. And all this function does is it prints out the data type of the args. So since I am able to pass in any unspecified number of positional arguments into this function, I might as well choose to pass in none. You can see the brackets over here are empty. So if I go ahead and execute this, you can see down below, it gives me the data type of the args, which is a tuple. And that's interesting to know because whenever we pass in any values into the function call, they're being saved in this args variable, which is a tuple. To see the implications of this, let's look at the second example. So we've defined a function called args example two. And over here, I simply choose to print out all the individual values in the tuple. So I'm looking in this for loop, I'm, I'm looping through um, zero to the length of the tuple, and I'm printing out each and every single value. So over here you can see I have the values A, B, C, and D in the function call. So if I go ahead and execute this, you can see each individual value being printed out. Let's have a look at another easy example to see the implications of args and how we can use it. Over here at the top, I have a function called addition one, and I'm adding the values a and b together. So all this function does is return the sum of both numbers. So if I go ahead and execute this very first example, you can see I'm adding four and seven together, which gives me 11. If I were to choose to add even more numbers to this, so let's perhaps add four, seven, eight, nine, and 10, then you will see that it already says that I'm inputting unexpected arguments. And if I go ahead and execute this, 
You will also see the error come up at the bottom, which says that addition one, so the function we just created, takes two positional arguments, but five were given in total. And that's true because over here in the function call, we have two arguments, but no, I mean over in the function definition, I'm sorry, we have two uh, positional arguments, but then below in the call, we have five, so that does not work. So how could we create a function that allows us to add an arbitrary amount of numbers together without having to specify the exact amount? So that is where the function two over here comes into play. Over here, I'm adding, I'm um, allowing for an unspecified number of positional arguments by using this args input. Then I'm saying that the sum is initially equal to zero, but I'm going to loop through all the arguments saved in the tuple and add it to the sum and print out the sum. So if I now go ahead and perhaps copy the values here and paste them back down here, and then I try to execute this, you can see that it does in fact add together all the individual numbers that I've added to the function call. So even if I go ahead and add some more to this, it will always work. You can see that the output is still correct. Now that we've looked at args, let's move on to quarks. Quarks are quite similar because they allow us to pass in an unspecified number of keyword arguments into a function. So as before with args, we're going to take a look at the data type that we're dealing with first. So over here, I've created a function similar to the one we've seen before, but instead of args, I'm using quarks. If I go ahead and then execute this, you can see that now instead of a tuple, um, we're dealing with a dictionary. So whenever we pass in any keyword arguments into the function call, we are saving them in a dictionary. To see this, we can look at the second function down here. We've defined the function quarks example two, and we are simply printing out all the items of the dictionary. So if I go ahead and execute this, you will see that it says that the dictionary items are keyword one, which is A, and keyword two, which is B, which is exactly the two values, or specifically the two key value pairs that we have in the function call. And since I'm using quarks, which allows me to add an unspecified number of arguments into the function, I can even go ahead and add more than that. So let me show you by perhaps adding a few more. So we have keyword three and keyword four, and we're going to make this C and D. And after executing this, we have a similar result, but we're also getting the new values. So we're still getting the dictionary, but now we also have the keyword three and the keyword four.